Motorsports coverage presents Speed World. Here is the scene on a Midwestern Saturday night. Perfect night for racing at Indianapolis Raceway Park. And the fans have packed in for the CarQuest Sprint Car Classic. Here on... It's the seventh round of the Loctite USAC Sprint Car Championship. Battling on the dirt and on the pavement. Tonight, it's 120 mile an hour action around this big paved oval. We've been assigned. The four-time USAC Sprint Car Champion, Steve Butler, is the fast qualifier, but not without some problems earlier. Yeah, he lost the rear end in that car. They had to... Uh, changed the whole rear end, completely rebuild it, and he had quick time with only one lap, which is pretty significant. Well, of course, the winner... Park as we ride along with Eric Garden. He'll start inside the third row. Right in front is that yellow number seven of Robbie Stanley, and in front of Robbie is Johnny Parsons. As we look down just over his head, yep, there's the helmet. Good look inside the cockpit. Uh, it should be a good race. He, Doug Wolfgang won that race last week, so we're looking forward to this week. Here's your starting lineup. The front row, zero, is Johnny Parsons alongside Wayne Hammond in 66. The fastest six drivers are inverted. Robbie Stanley and Jim Keeker comprise row two. The third row will have your two fastest qualifiers, Eric Gordon in six, the fast qualifier, Steve Butler in 69, row four, Don Schilling and Gene Lee Gibson. In the fifth row, on the inside, Jeff Bloom outside. Once again, the fastest six drivers are inverted, which means your fastest qualifiers will start in the third row. Dave, you have some comments. Well, I got a sentimental favorite in this one, and that's Gene Lee, because I like to see history, but I got to think that this guy might have the best shot at it. He's two for two. That's Robbie Stanley, twice on the pavement this year. He's come home a winner, and tonight he's got a good starting spot and a good shot at the head of the field to maintain that point lead. Don't count Steve Butler out of this one. He's due for some good luck. Well, don't forget that guy starts inside the front row, has a wealth of experience, Johnny Parsons. We're not going to say how old Johnny is because he's about your age, and that's getting up there, Rice. All right, he did. I tell you, he's experienced. He's got, he picked three of the good guys, but Parsons and, and Butler, Butler. Uh, you know, all these guys are going to be tough. Eric Gordon's going to be tough. All these first six or eight guys, everyone has a legitimate shot to win this race, so this ought to be one heck of a race. Well, we could off trying to outsmart each other. Let's see who wins this battle. Oh, we got a problem right there. Is that was uh, Keeker. Keeker actually got the fence, but everybody makes it through down the front straightaway into one, into two. Keeker may have had a problem, though, because he's backing off the pace down the back stretch, and Hammond gets the advantage of the third turn. Parsons is now second. Well, right now, Parsons, he knows this is a 30-lap race. He knows he doesn't want to wear that tire out. He's going to give him a look, but he's not going to use that tire up until he's done going sure he can make that pass. But he's running fast right now. But look at Stanley. He's doing the same thing. He's running pretty quick right back there in that yellow car right behind him in that seven car. Eric Gordon in the black car running number four. He also is running a pretty smart race right now. These guys are going to wait. They're going to try to size each other up before they make any big bad moves here. You're saying it's a little self-discipline right now, a little patience. Well, they, they've all seen this happen. They've all seen each other go out there, blister tires, do silly things early in the race when it wasn't really necessary. They want to make sure they've got a good, clean, clear shot before they give a guy a shot going around them. All of a sudden, we have a freight train into one, into two. Parsons gets a little high. Stanley back there in third. Gordon, Eric Gordon is fourth. And fifth now is Butler. And everybody's closed in on him. These guys up there in front, they're not going to be able to see those turns very long. They better start thinking about making a move. Oh, look at this. Hammond gets way sideways. Parsons is going to beat him out in there. Had to. Parsons had the line. He had the line on him. I'm surprised Hammond's got back up in there. But look at Stanley. He ducks right down under him. He can't quite make it stick, though. Okay, right now, we're going to see how just when Robbie Stanley is. Can he wait? Can he make this move? Or is he going to try real hard and get his tire too hot like he did the heat race? Right now, he's a young guy. Oh, look at Butler. He stuck his nose down in here, but he couldn't make it stick either. This is a great race, and I think that's Gene Lee Gibson back there in that red car. He's caught up with the rest of them, too. Gene Lee and then uh, Don Schilling in the black car. We got seven or eight guys that are right to hunt. Any one of these guys with the right break, the right move to win this race. Eric Gordon now, he's giving him a look. He started a little nose right under Robbie Stanley a little bit right there. Johnny Parsons certainly has a, a world of ability, experience. Uh, nobody is uh, any more talented out there than what Johnny Parsons is. Parsons is doing a great job. Look at, Look Stanley. at Stanley. He's getting real excited. He's wait. He's tired of waiting. He's going to give him a shot. He, he tried to give him a shot coming off the corner. He moved down under him. Now they look at Hammonds. He got a little bit excited there when he saw that nose come under there. He speeded up. He started to catch Parsons. I think all these cars. Oh, he's made that same mistake a couple times. That cost him the lead the last Gordon now begins to smoke a right rear. He yellow does. flag is out. We have a yellow flag. That will bunch the field up. Boy, oh 
boy, that, there's been some fantastic racing up there. There hasn't been a whole lot of passing, but those guys are really, really racing close and hard. Uh, we should have one more lap. There's the signal. Robbie Stanley is second. Wayne Hammond is third. This is going to help Eric Gordon. He had that tire hot. He was smoking that tire, so this may give him an opportunity to come back. 11 laps complete. We've been correct now. Only 11 laps complete. The green flag uh, flies again. We work on lap number 12. Parsons uh, picks up where he left off. Slides just a bit up there in turn one. Yeah, Robbie Stanley again smoked that right rear coming off there trying to get a big jump on him. He just couldn't do it. Look how strong that motor is going down the back straightaway. That engine of his looks pretty strong. He gained a whole car length going to Parsons going into three right then. He comes up with a little bit more speed. It's going to be off the top. Oh, look at this battle back here. That's the battle for third, fourth, and fifth. Eric Gordon, the black number six. He rides in this third spot. And there's Steve Butler in the white 69, a four-time USAC sprint car champion. And there is Gene Lee Gibson in the aristocrat number one, the red car. Look how much faster Gene Lee looks in this race than he did in that semi. He looks much, much faster in this race. They went in, they made the changes necessary. Now he's competitive. Bob Zaccone is out of the race for you. Bob Zaccone fits. Oh, a car hard into the outside wall coming out of the front straight away that was car number 44 david harrison did a complete spin against the wall and continues on i don't believe that rice i don't either there's so much smoke Iver, you can't really do that here's our leader parsons and he's here's robbie stanley in second this is going to be very interesting parsons is a, an old fox here we see eric gordon in third in the black six have butler's the 69 car and the aristocrat card with Gene Lee Gibson back there behind him, and then Schilling in the 12P car. These guys all are in the hunt. They're all running fast at this point, Gary. All right, we have a green, the restart. Now, can Stanley get him down the front oh. corner? And Stanley hey. smokes the right rear. He hauled her in there. He hauled her in there, stood on the brakes, and that thing almost got away from him. Parsons got a big break right there. If he'd have been a little closer to him and slapped him up the side of the rear end there, they could have both been in big trouble. Keep in mind, they invert the fastest six starters on these uh, sprint features, so J.P. being the sixth quickest had the advantage of starting on the pole. Look at Gene Lee Gibson. He is up to fourth. He just got around Steve Butler. He's up to fourth. He is on the move. He's the man that's on the move at this point of the race. He's working on Eric Gordon. If he gets around Eric Gordon, Oh, there he goes. He's going to give him a shot right underneath. Duff can't make a stick. He's going to slide up behind him. He can't hear the kid. And uh, as I reminded him on the radio network, he lost a big payday. It'd be nice to see him collect one here. Look at this. we got Butler. He's trying to get back around Gene Lee Gibson. He doesn't give up. He gets past him. Goes right back at him. Gene Lee's going to have to get around Eric Gordner. He's going to have Steve Butler to contend with. Butler's going after him pretty hard at this point. Now, but with that infighting between those three, the gap opens up between... Uh, Second, third, there's one on the inside. They almost get together. Oh, man, is that intimidation or what? Gene Lee, he never moved a muscle. He held right in there, and I don't see how, because Butler gave him every indication he was going to come right up and give him a whack. And Butler got him. Now Butler is on the charge, trying to catch up to Eric Gordon. And Gordon now has closed in on Stanley. Yeah, it looks like Butler's having a... I mean, uh, Eric Gordon had a little trouble getting in the corner. He got sideways. When he did, he killed his momentum, and bingo, bingo, there went... There was Butler right on around him. You know, Butler is featured in the, this month's issue of Open Wheel Magazine. You see that first sprint car ride he ever had? Would you climb in that box? He's come a long <laughs> way, baby. He's come a long way. A four-time USAC sprint champion, the only driver to win four titles, the only driver to win three in a row. And look at this battle for the lead. Oh, boy, Stanley tries that move up too. That's the same move he cut by Wayne Hammond earlier, and he's going to keep trying it and trying it, but he can't make it stick with Parsons. He wants to try to pinch that car coming off and get down under him, but it looks like he's getting a little bit loose. He's, he's tried that pinching method Here too many comes times. Butler on the inside. Butler's due for a little good luck, too. He's another one of the guys that's run real hard all year long, but he's had a little bit of bad luck. It looks like it might be his night. He's running really, really quick right now. Here Again, goes Sam. Attempt for the lead. To uh -oh. the inside. He just here lost comes second Butler. Place. He just lost second place. That, he moved that down there. That move cost him. That move cost him. Butler doesn't give you too many mistakes. He's a smart cookie. When you make one mistake on him, you're going to pay for it. Now we're going to see. Butler has caught Parsons. This is going to be, oh, it doesn't look like he's going to wait very long. Right down inside him. Parsons doesn't flinch. Right on in there. Butler comes up. He gives that left rear right on the right. Right front, right on his left rear. He got right it. on the rail. Oh, man, oh, man. Slid right up in front of him. That was a classic move he just put on Parsons. He went up there. He just barely touched JP's left rear with his right front. Moved him over just enough to upset the race car. Bam, he's gone. All right, let's see if JP has something left. As here comes Robbie Stanley. The race right now is in second position. Oh, Robbie Stanley still working on Parsons. There he goes. He's going to try to pinch it down under him. See if he can get around. 
Robbie, and that's a J and J chassis underneath the uh, Hoffman. Uh, or no, that's the Hoffman cars out leading with uh, Butler. Blue this smoke. is the battle for second. Blue smoke, blue smoke. He's got he's pinched that car so many times. He's got that right rear hot. It's gonna be hard. But Butler is gone at this point. It looks like Steve Butler has everything working his way. JP doesn't have enough for him. Stanley can't quite get around JP. So it looks like unless Butler's luck uh, holds true and goes bad on him for some silly reason, he might have this baby as wraps. Whoa, we got a fire right there on car number 85. That's Bruce Field. We saw the flames. He heads for the infield. He'll be bailing out of that race car. Yeah, the yellow is out. This may be exactly what Parsons needs. JP is going to have to pull every trick in the book that he knows, and I quite honestly don't think he's got quite enough tricks to handle Steve Butler at this point. Well, Butler leads over Parsons, Stanley, Gibson, and Gordon. 27 of 30 laps complete. We'll take this break and come back. He knew he had to get out of the way. He knew he had to get it down to the infield. He knew he had to get it stopped. He was concentrating so hard on doing all those things that he saw that big ball of flame, but it never, he never thought about getting burned. Now in second position, the green flag flies. We have three laps to go in the CarQuest Classic here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Let's see if J.P. has an ace. Uh, uh, look out, look out, J.P. had trouble. Oh, no, man, you talk about bad luck. Time by, okay, does Robbie Stanley have an ace in the hole? It's time for him to show it. Well, surprisingly enough, I didn't think he was going to be able to keep up with Steve Butler, but it looks like he is. But with only one lap to go, I don't think so. Gene Lee, he's back there, 10 or 12 car length. He doesn't have enough. Well, I don't know, Stanley, Stanley's may fool us all here. He's not giving up, is he? Got the back stretch, the final two turns. They negotiate turn three. It looks like Butler may hang on. The four-time USAC Sprint Car Champion takes the victory in the Car Quest Classic. The Hoffman chassis, uh, owned by the Hoffman family. They designed and built the race car, do a lot of tinkering and experimentation, and Steve Butler brings it home. Well, Steve Butler's a, he's a, such a great race car driver. We mentioned it before, all the things that have gone wrong for him this year. He was due for a little good luck, believe me. Static victory lane. Uh, you never get tired of winning, do you, Dave? I don't think this guy gets tired of winning. Four-time champion, the only man ever to claim that distinction. And tonight, finally, the thing came all the way home and came out in front. Congratulations, Steve Butler. Thanks a lot, Dave. Uh, we've had fast time every time out with uh, this car, and we broke every time out except tonight, and we won. And I'd like to thank uh, the Hoffmans. They're a great team. And Gertie Engine, Hoosier Tires, National Rear Ends. You know, we couldn't do it without them. But this is definitely the, uh, the best car in USAC pavement racing. You know, it showed it tonight, and it showed it in qualifying. And... I think we're going to get the bugs, you know, when you have something different, you have to work the bugs out of it. And I think that hopefully, you know, you got to knock on wood because racing can bite you real quick. But hopefully <laughs> we'll get better and better as the year goes along. Well, you know, we were thinking after watching you fast time, as you said, every race set the record at Winchester and then have the car break under you. Tonight, it looked like you had your bad luck real early. Tell me about that. Yeah, we talked about that. You know, we, we had uh, the rear end break, had to change the whole rear end just before qualifying. In fact, we... We uh, kind of missed our spot going out to qualify, and then the car jumped out of gear, and we, we only got one lap. And you know, I was, you know, I was really nervous. I thought, man, you know, we're not even going to get in the top six. And uh, so I really went out there and hustled it, you know. And the car was a little loose, and it was chopping around. And I said, no, you know, I got to make the top six. I don't want to start back deep in the pack. And then when I came around, these photographers were giving me the thumb up and pointing their finger. And I said, what's wrong with those guys? There's no way that was quick time. You know, it just. It just felt so erratic. I thought there was no way at quick time. They must mean I'm on the pole position, you know? And I, I came in, the guys told me I had quick time, and it was just like, you know, a Cinderella story. And, and you're right, we got our bad luck out of the way early tonight, so we were able to, to win the feature. Quickly, tell me about the charge past, uh, past Parsons and Stanley to get into the lead. That was a pretty good four or five lap battle. Yeah, we, uh, you know, this track is hard to pass on, Dave. You know, it's the most bank is on the outside. So when guys try to race each other, they burn their tires up. So our strategy was to hang back and uh, let those guys race real hard and get their tires all greasy and then uh, go up there and see what we could do with them. And that strategy worked real good because by the time we, could, we decided to make our move, they had slowed down quite a bit. Congratulations to you. Great job. Steve Butler has won it Thanks. here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this timeout. Raceway Park, the party is underway behind us. Steve Butler has finally got that car to the finish line, and it came home first. A great victory tonight for the young man who has qualified so well all year. Finally got it to finish once, and he finished it right out front. How about it?